Hello. Hi, how you doing? Uh, I'm doing well. Uh, thanks for being here, Mary. Um, and hello, everyone to the audience. Uh, I see we already have two viewers on YouTube and some more viewers on Facebook. Nice. Great. All right. Um, hello, everyone. So um, welcome to the premiere of Marion's cooking video that uh, we at SAS Books prepared. Um, we will start that in just a minute. But first, um, I'm going to give a brief introduction and let uh, Marion say a few words after that. So let's go. So my name is Logan McKay, for those of you who've seen the other Book Week streams, uh, maybe already familiar. Um, I'm the Book Week coordinator for SAS Books, Saskatchewan's nonprofit creative industry association for book publishing. And thank you all for coming. Um, we are honored to have Marion here to join us for the premiere of her video. So. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you for um, inviting me. It's my pleasure to be here. You're welcome. Um, but first, before we get into that, uh, I would like to make, uh, SAS Books would like to make a few acknowledgements. And I would too. Um, SAS Books head office is located on Treaty 4 territory in Regina. Um, and SAS Books work spans the whole province and lands covered by Treaties 2, 4, 5, 6, 8, and 10 including the traditional lands of the Nahiawak, Anishinaabek, Dakota, Lakota, Nakota, Dene, and Métis people. As part of our commitment to decolonization, we invite everyone to read the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's calls to action and to consider what actions that they might take to dismantle colonialism, what actions we might take. Um, and I've said that uh, acknowledgement all week, but today is, of course, Truth and Reconciliation Day. So um, I think that rings even more important. Not that it doesn't always ring important, but uh, yeah. So I will put a link to those. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission calls to action in the chat. Um, we also invite everyone to uh, type in the comments what uh, treaty land that they are viewing from. And I will put links in the chat shortly for those as well. Oops. Okay. Um, and then um, we would also like to acknowledge and thank our funders, the Department of Canadian Heritage via the Canada Book Fund and Young Canada Ber Works, Building Careers in Heritage, Creative Saskatchewan and the Canada Council for the Arts with whose support Book Week would not be possible. So yeah. Um, that is my introduction and, uh, we will get the video started soon. Before we do that, is there anything you'd like to say, Marion, for the, uh, Yes, I'd like your... to thank uh, SAS Books for having me on uh, and honoring my book this week for SAS Book Week. It's uh, really a pleasure. And I also would like to acknowledge uh, for Truth and Reconciliation, we're wearing orange today in honoring uh, and remembering our Indigenous uh, people today. And also Ukraine for prayers and peace in Ukraine, which uh, is so important as my mom was Ukrainian. And the cookbook is Baba Sophie's Ukrainian cookbook. And it's actually my mom's recipes. And she's on the cover, Sophie, and me as a little girl. And we actually do have a Bannock recipe in there to honor Indigenous people. So you could look for that in our recipe. We got the recipe, my uh, 
daughter-in-law is indigenous and she got it from her cousin, Carla. So thank you for giving us that recipe and sharing. And it's in our book, Bannock. Thanks. Thanks very much, Marion. And yeah, um, that's great. Um, so is there anything else more you'd like to say about the uh, video before we well, it was a first time experience for us, Logan, and I yeah. think it went really well. And my sister Angie helped me with it. So we made borscht, which is my mom's recipe, which is a meatless borscht uh, for Ukrainian people. They serve it on Ukrainian Christmas Eve. And so it has no meat in it, but lots of vegetables and beets, which make it unique because it has that red, beautiful color that beets uh, have. And so that, again, is a, a unique to Ukrainian borscht. And the whole book is just a wonderful tribute to my mom, Sophie, and uh, to the Ukrainian ancestors. And so uh, I hope you enjoy it. And I hope you enjoy uh, making borscht with us. Uh, it was a wonderful experience. And uh, I think it was just great. Thanks, Logan, for your idea and putting that out there. You're welcome. And thank you, Marion, for uh, for doing it with us. It was a real treat. All right. Well, let's get into the video now. Hello. And I'm here with my sister, Ed. I'm Marianne Mutella, and I'm here with my sister Angie, and we're going to make Ukrainian borscht today from my book, Baba's Babushka's book, Baba Sophie's Ukrainian Cookbook, and it's on page 14 of the book of my mom's recipe for borscht. So, Angie, let's start today, and okay. we're going to start by putting butter in, and it's about three tablespoons of butter we're going to put in our pot. And that's the first thing you do is you put the butter in and then you put the onions and where you can look for one large onion um, and we'll cut that right away up one large onion. Um, you can cut it and get the ends off and then you peel it and then we're going to cut all these beautiful onions up. And it's usually one large onion you put in. And the secret to making cooking for borscht especially is to caramelize the onions. So you really want to cook the onions good down so they're caramelized. So we'll put those onions in now in the pot. And you can hear it, a nice sound of the onions cooking. And while we're getting the rest of the, the onions being cooked, we'll prep for the rest and adding the cabbage next. And you can get a nice beautiful head of cabbage here. And you always have to take the core out of the cabbage at the start of it. So we'll just get this knife here and take the core out. You have to kind of cut it like this all the way around to get the core out. And we're going to use half this cabbage in our borscht. So the core comes out and then Angie's going to cut this cabbage in half. And some of them are very hard, aren't they, Mary? Yes, they're very hard. Our mother would say, why can't they grow softer cabbage? <laughs> <laughs> so you just peel off the edges of it and you cut it nice and small pieces. You know, some people like to cook big chunks, but when we made ours, we always like to cut up things really nice and small in smaller chunks. So I'm just going to stir the onions here. They're being caramelized as we're cooking. Angie's doing a great job cutting up the cabbage for to put in our borscht. And like I said, it's about a half of a head of a cabbage that goes in there. So once your onions are caramelized down, we'll put the cabbage in to the borscht. Next, Angie, what do we do next? We're going to add the beets. Okay. Now the unique thing about beets, and that's what makes Ukrainian borscht so unique, 
uh, versus other borscht is they're red. And this is beautiful for making dye for all different kinds of things. You get it all over and it uh, gets really nice and red. Uh, we already steam these beets because once you steam them, it's very easy to peel. I want to put this in here, Mary. Yeah. It's very easy to peel the beets here. So you can just peel them. So I've steamed some beets here and they just peel nice. Otherwise, they're hard to cut the beets off. So. We've got a nice little peeling going on there with the beets. And usually you use about three medium beets for a batch of borscht. Now my mom used to make a big pot of borscht. She had those blue canners with the white flecks on it. And so her recipe in the book is for one, but she would probably triple that recipe to make her borscht. Put that away. Yeah. So the cabbage is being cooked down and so is the onions there and Angie's demonstrating here nicely how to cook uh, and cut the nice beets and you'll see we'll make them in now some people shred their beets but we cut them into small pieces everyone there's a million different ways to make borscht and everyone does it a little different, but this, I'm making the original recipe from my mom, Sophie. So when you put the beets in, you put them in and stir it all up. And then we've got some fresh dill here. And if the dill is big, you can cut it. So it isn't quite as big like this. We're putting this right in, aren't we? Yeah, put it right in, right away. Then I usually put a little bit of salt and pepper now to get the flavor going. So we'll put maybe a half a teaspoon of salt and a little bit of pepper. And uh, another thing we've do done in the meantime is we boil some hot water in the kettle there and that's gonna, you're gonna add your liquid and so you should always add boiling hot water to your borscht. It's just quicker, right? Yeah, but it also makes a better flavor, brings the flavors out. So we're gonna add that now. One pot of this, and if you need more, you can always add it later. But usually you add enough to cover all the vegetables in. Okay. Okay, so we were getting some peas here next day. Eh? Yeah, so you, sh if you have a garden, you could pick your peas and you could shell them. Um, we already pre-did the peas there for you, and you'll see that you shell them, and then we're going to put those in next, our peas into our borscht. A lot of vegetables, a lot of, so it's very healthy and, and nutritious. And another thing that makes uh, Ukrainian borscht really unique is uh, there's no meat in it. And uh, uh, the Ukrainians have celebrate Ukrainian Christmas Eve, Sviat Bachir, and it's the second dish that you often serve on Ukrainian Christmas Eve is borscht. And because it's a special meal, they have no meat. It's a meatless evening, so we don't put meat in our borscht. And now Angie's peeling the carrots. So you peel the carrots, wash them, and then you again, you cut them nice and small and put in your carrots. So you're adding your vegetables one at a time to the beautiful borscht there. And then after she peels that, she'll just demonstrate how to uh, cut the carrots here. We always wash our vegetables too. Okay. Yeah. And so you're cutting the carrots nice and small. Again, we like our vegetables cut nice and small. And so we kind of put them in the way it takes longer to cook or less to cook. Like we could have put the carrots in before the peas, but it doesn't really matter. You can put them in the way you want. So you got the carrots in? And then yeah, with the carrots, and the next we'll do is the beans. And the beans, again, you wash them, and then you have to take off the ends 
for the, the beans. They each have little ends and then you cut them up too. Again, and Angie will demonstrate how to cut those beans for you. So I'm putting, she's cutting the beans and I'm going to put some in to our borscht. So you can see this is a very healthy soup. Uh, and my mom always said it's calorie wise too because you're eating a lot of vegetables. So there you go. Okay, so then we got what else? We got the potatoes. Okay, there. and now we have the potatoes. And so I have one potato here peeled. It takes about three potatoes to go in the borscht again. And I peeled one for you to see. And now she's cutting up small. And we're going to put the potatoes in next. Because fresh potatoes don't take that long to cook. Like the beets take longer than the potatoes. So that's why we're putting the potatoes in last. And basically, if they come to a boil, they're almost ready. Doesn't take them long. It doesn't take long at all. So you can see this is a very nutritious uh, soup and very healthy. So potatoes all done nice and small and cut up. And then, so then you cook it. But when you're cooking your uh, borscht, you want to cook it so that the vegetables are just done. You do not want to overcook them because then you don't want soggy ve vegetables. So just cook it till it's just done. And then when the, it is done and all cooked, then you get to add vinegar. But you have to wait till the soup is cooled a little bit to add your vinegar. And then at the end, you're going to add uh, cream too to your soup. And okay. again, once it's cooled, and then uh, basically that's it, and then you get to eat it. So uh, the soup is cooking right now, and uh, Bring it over here. yeah, then you can show. Once it's all cooked, we have a beautiful pot of borscht ready for you. You'll see there, and we're going to taste that in a few minutes. We're going to get to taste this borscht. Um, with sour cream and bread and uh, you know mom would make a lot of homemade loaves of bread but we have some rye bread to taste it with today and you have a beautiful pot of borscht here let me just have a little spoon to show you what it looks like delicious borscht there so it's been a pleasure cooking for you today Giacomo you thank you very much for uh, coming and allowing us to share my mom, Sophie Mutella Dubeck, her beautiful borscht soup. And you're going to read that poem now while you're waiting to the borscht to finish cooking. Exactly. We're going to do that. I'm going to read a poem for you from Ukrainian Daughters Dance. It's called Baba's Borscht, Food for Thought. Smell the dill, vinegar, Fresh scent on tongue fills my nose. Senses alive, invigorating. Time of year, produce from the garden ready. Red beets ripe. Picture my mama, up early, box dress on slacks, going to her garden, her store, picks homegrown vegetables, carries them in her Bubba's apron and wash tub to the house. Washes vegetables in the kitchen sink, pulls out her white flaked metal blue canner soup pot, starts the endless task, peeling, cutting, slicing, dicing, and more importantly, the red beets, which give Ukrainian borscht its color, flavor. Caramelize onions in real butter. Sophie adds boiling water, salt, pepper, vegetables one by one. One cup shredded cabbage, one cup chopped potatoes, a half a cup beans, half a cup shelled peas, half a cup sliced carrots, four medium sized dice beets, and sprigs of dill. Biting, delicious aroma wafts and unfolds in her kitchen. I taste my first spoonful. Simmer soup till vegetables tender but firm. When ready, Mama adds vinegar to taste before adding frothy real cream. Serves it with her homemade bread. Picture my mate, babushka tied back behind her head. Stirring, tasting, pinch of salt, shake of pepper, distinct flavor. 
necessary dill and vinegar. Getting it oh so right. Oh so delicious. And yes, it contains and fills my Ukrainian soul. Mmm, if only I had washed more closely, paid more attention. Perhaps my borscht would taste better. If only I'd asked my mother more questions. If only Sophie was here to make me borscht one last time. If. We're here sampling borscht that Angie and I just made. And it's from my cookbook, Baba Sophie's Ukrainian Cookbook. Page 14 if you want to try making the recipe. So Logan's having it for the first time. So Logan, mm -hmm. if you pass me your bowl, I'll fill it up with borscht for you. And this is how Ukrainians do it. They fill it up with borscht, just like that. And then at the top, they put sour cream. So they put a dollop or sour cream at the top. And then there you go. And then you have it with bread. And my mom often made homemade bread, but we have rye bread today uh, for you to taste with butter. So go ahead, help yourself to the rye bread there, Logan. And uh, then I'll give Angie some borscht too. And put a dollop of sour cream on there. Thank you, Marion. And you're welcome. Thank so you very much. Have a taste and see what it, how you like. Your first sampling of borscht. I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> oh, really, really good, Marion. Is it? It turned out good. Duja dobra, very good. Duja dobra. Yeah. <laughs> Diakou, well, thank you for being with us, and it's been great being with Logan from Sass Books and You're his first welcome. taste of borscht. I'm. It is so delicious. Thank well, you. Well, maybe we'll much. make a Ukrainian guy out of you yet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having us. Yeah. I'm here with the Sassy Sisters, my sister Angie and Mary Mattel here. We're going to uh, play for you a couple Ukrainian tunes, Sistra Oi Sistra and Tom Nahori. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I can't hear you, Logan. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Hi. All right. Um, yeah, how was that? How was that, Marion? 
That's very exciting to see it all come together. You did an excellent job, Logan, of putting it all together, the poem and the music and the recipe. Well done. Well done. Very thank good. Very much. And, and yeah. thank you for starring in that um, <laughs> great role. And um, I have to say, um, ever since I tried that borscht, I've been craving it like every day. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been, I've been so busy that I haven't had like time to like really cook and like get to the grocery store and get all the ingredients for it. But like every day I've been like, I want to get some beets. I want to get some cabbage and I just want to like, I just want to cook it. it was, we got it you was, hooked on borscht. Good. It's it's it a lovely really dish. That good. Yeah. And especially when it gets colder, you know, and it's colder outside. It's always good to have hot soup. And that's a delicious soup for sure. Well, thank you again. And we thank SAS Books. It's just been a wonderful experience for myself and for Angie too. And we had a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, that's that's great. I'm And I'm glad. And I also had a lot of fun. So, yeah. Um. So that was the video, but does anyone have any uh, questions or comments um, that they'd like to share? Um, let's see. Ooh. Bruce says, bonus music. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Wendy <laughs> says, excellent presentation, Marion and Angie. Jillian says, this is making me very hungry, Marion. <laughs> Um, she also has a question for you uh, about uh, why do Ukrainian special meals don't, why do they not include meat? Uh, because of uh, during uh, Ukrainian Christmas Eve, because of the, the Christianity. So a lot of the traditions are Christian based. And so for Christmas Eve, you're not allowed to eat meat. And so when you have borscht, it can't have meat in it. So at that time, other times you can eat meat, but just on Christmas Eve, Sviat Vichir, which is their Ukrainian Christmas Eve supper, January 6th or December 24th is the two nights that they specialize in. Um, they do not eat meat. And it has to go back with a long time to the be beginning of Christianity, 2000 years ago. So, Wow. So there's a long history there, huh? There's a long history. The Ukrainian history is ancient, and the traditions are ancient that we're bringing with us from Ukraine. My grandparents came in 1911 and 12 and brought all these traditions with them, passed them on to my mom, and now I'm passing them on to future generations. <laughs> They're being preserved in my books, so. Oh, that's great. Um, Carolyn says, yummy, I'm surprised there's no garlic. Yeah, no, there is still garlic and borscht. Some people say that, but we have a lot of garlic and everything, and there's garlic meatballs in uh, my recipe book. My mom, Sophie, loved to make garlic meatballs, and I had, uh, my grandson was born, and we had a baby shower for him, and Martin, my cousin, and I made 300 garlic meatballs based on the <laughs> recipe in the book. So we do have lots of gar garlic, especially in our kubasa and other things, but not in borscht. Huh. Oh, yeah. I, I do like garlic, so I'll have to look through some of those recipes and for uh, mm -hmm. something like that. Garlic meatballs. That sounds very delicious. They are delicious. Um. Do you have any more comments or questions from anyone? Let's see. I guess um, um, I have a question. Is Do you think there's any sort of like um, Saskatchewan influence in the cookbook at all? Well, my Some mom was raised in Saskatchewan. She grew up in Saskatchewan. So she's from Hafford, Saskatchewan. And when she married dad, she, we moved, she moved to Hanley Keniston. And I grew up on a farm by Hanley Keniston. The farm isn't there. So it's totally Saskatchewan, the roots. But a lot of the, that's why a lot of Ukrainians immigrated from Ukraine to, to Saskatchewan because uh, of the farming, right? The first, especially the first immigration, uh, there's, five wave of immigration of Ukrainians that came and even more now 
with the war going on. But a lot of the people love Saskatchewan because it was farming and you're, and Ukraine is the breadbasket of Europe too, and farms a lot too, just like in Saskatchewan, we grow a lot of wheat and farming. So my ancestors, my grandparents were farmers and they brought the traditions here. And then my parents were farmers too. So yes, it's totally local. And my mom would grow huge gardens on our farm, huge gardens. So yes, everything was locally grown. The only thing we bought were when I was growing up was tea and maybe sugar and coffee. Everything else we raised on our farm. We had chickens and pigs and cows. So everything was, uh, you know, free range and, and uh, fresh, fresh produce all the time. Nice. Yeah, I, I definitely see how they could, they would be uh, at home here in Saskatchewan uh -huh. our, with our farming culture. Yeah. Yes, for sure. Okay. Um, oh, Jillian asks, uh, can you talk a bit why it's important to see your culture preserved in books? Mm -hmm. Why it's important to see Ukrainian culture preserved in books? You know, when I first started writing my books, I just wanted to write books as an author. But uh, now that a lot of my ancestors have passed on, I think it's very important that we preserve these traditions for future generations. And I do a lot of s talking in schools and, and around the provinces and even in Alberta. And now my books have become tools for peace. And uh, I feel that if you learn about Ukrainian culture and I learn about your culture, then it's going to make the world a better place. And that's what I'm all about now. So I sign all my books, Peace, Mary and Mutella, and I want to teach you about my traditions and culture, but I want to learn about yours. And then we can create peace and understanding in the world. And that's so, so important. We need to do that. And I ask myself every day, what am I doing today to, pr to promote peace? And uh, the shirt I have on says peace equals power. I don't you know if you can see it, but when I was teaching at BGM, um, we made uh, peace t-shirts and we made peace posters. And every year we do a peace project. And that's so important. And especially on this day for truth and reconciliation, you know, we need to, to remember that and honor the indigenous people and support them in their journey and to help them heal so that it makes the world a better place for all of us, right? We need to support each other as human beings. And I wrote a book called Race to Finish. Um, the idea with it uh, during COVID, I wrote it, is as human beings, if we don't start learning to get along with one another, uh, it'll be the end of the human race. So we need to support each other and take care of each other. That's a very nice message, um, especially on this day. And yeah, um... And if I could uh, read that poem, I would love to share that poem with you, Race to Finish, if we have time. <laughs> um, we do have time. Well, let's see. Um, do... Do we? Do you have the poem uh, right, right here? Yeah. Here's the book Race to Finish, and Kevin Pius... Uh, did the cover and uh, it's a reconciliation cover and the picture is in Edmonton at the University of Edmonton and it has to do with the theme of reconciliation and he, we put that with him his help on my cover of my book Race to Finish and it's right. to honor and, and uh, Indigenous people. So. All right um, if you'd like to read that um, let's uh, let's have it it'll be a live stream exclusive. Okay, awesome. It's called Race to Finish. Will we make it? Does not look like it if you watch TV. But movements are happening and in the right direction. But we've seen it before with Martin Luther King, Louis Rial, Nora Berard, Ann Cools, Chief Dan George, Alanis Obasamon, and Drake. Indigenous lives matter. Black lives matter. So with time on our side due to the strange COVID-19 pandemic, slowing down the world, let us evaluate what really matters. What do we value? Lives. Let us talk about justice, equality, and human rights. We have time to stand and be the voice for change. Can we race to finish or will race wars finish humanity?
That is a very powerful poem. Yes, I wrote this book during COVID and with all that was happening on TV and I thought it was very important that we, we talk about those things. And at the back, it has questions to ask each other, dialogue questions. Very important that we have a dialogue and talk about things. Yeah, everything that happened over the pandemic, so much, um, I guess, turmoil, so much tension between people, um, race, uh, race um, violence against uh, marginalized people, indigenous people. Um, yeah, I can see how that um, probably influenced you to make to make that statement so yeah thank you thank you marion for that you're welcome and as a baba now as a grandmother uh it's important that we are the voice for change we all of us we need to speak up Mm -hmm. that's what we have our voice and it can be powerful choose your words wisely and be powerful voices for change and healing in the world yeah we, that is a very good message. Well, thank you for that. Um, and I hope everyone uh, everyone in the audience takes something from that. And yeah, thank you very much. Um, well, you're welcome. It's my pleasure to be here. And it's an honor uh, to share my culture, but also more importantly, to share a message of peace with you. And again, thanks to SAS Books and Logan and your whole committee for for honoring my book, Baba Sophie's Ukrainian Cookbook. And I have a new book coming out next year. It's going to be Baba's Over the Moon about my grandson, Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to that, too. Um yes. Yeah, um, I guess I'll wrap things up by saying um, thank you to everyone in the audience for joining us today. Um, Thanks for uh, watching, engaging in the comments. Um, It was really great. Um, Thank you, Marion, for inviting us to record your cooking skills and (laughs) sharing that delicious borscht. Um, I am going to try now that this video is going to be going up on youtube uh probably tonight uh, i'm gonna try to get that um i'm gonna try cooking that myself good (laughs) maybe this weekend good luck (laughs) Uh, yeah and i i encourage everyone in the audience to do the same okay oh and then uh yeah um again i'd like to thank marion uh check out baba babushka dot uh, com for more of her books and look for her books in bookstores such as Turning the Tide or McNally Robinson in Saskatoon or the Penny University in Regina. And again, I'd like to thank the funders, Creative Saskatchewan, uh, Department of Canadian Heritage and Canada Council for the Arts for helping make Book Week possible, as well as all you guys, because um, our audience is why we do this. And yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. (laughs) You too. Thanks, everyone.